Welcome back, my friends, to Let's Play Stormblood, where we have entered the Siren Song Sea. Yeah, we need to find out what the heck has pulled this ship off course and... What the heck are those things? Okay, um... Kind of creeped out already by this, but... want to go anywhere, we're gonna have to deal with it. So one thing that's completely awesome is, as you can see, our friends are actually going to join us in combat. That's pretty damn sweet, if you ask me. Now what's kind of cool here is... Obsidian Carby will actually tank stuff on his own if you let him. And you won't need to worry about it. Like, you do still need to do tank some stuff, but it's better to just drag everything over to Lise, because Lise will just kick crap out of everything. Uh, she does way better GPS than anyone else here, so... And I should probably put on food, but yeah, it is, it is so awesome, because I remember... If you distinctly remember, I complained about this very thing all the way back in Somal that, you know, we're all climbing this mountain together and our friends aren't even visible in any sort of cutscenes or make any sort of cameos. And it does get fixed a bit in Sorkai late, much later on. But now we actually see them actively taking a role here, which is just bloody amazing. Like, granted, they're not doing that much damage, and it's all limited and stuff like that, but it's it's the thought that counts, you know? It makes them feel more inclusive and in that, you know, yes, they are actually here with us and actively assisting us, and that's just completely fantastic in my book. I, I love this. Jagass captain over there is just chilling over there in the background with his axe, not doing a damn thing. And I need to eat. Actually, I have this on my hotbar. I need to eat some food just so I can get experience bonus. Yeah, and I suppose you're gonna stay behind to do damage and check the damage on the ship. Not that I can entirely blame you because we just crashed into a reef or something. I mean, you gotta make sure the ship is not continuously haunted and have these creepy things crawling all over it for the duration of our unintended stop here. But yeah, this place does feel a bit redundant because we already... This is obviously meant to invoke, as you can see in the background, the ship graveyard from Final Fantasy V. But we already had the ship graveyard and faced even being called Siren herself. So this is just based on the idea of of the myths of Sirens and stuff as a whole. Like you see, you see we have Banshees and stuff here uh, on, as well. But... I almost it almost feels like this place is was kind of an afterthought just to to fill the gap. Um, partially because we're on a long journey here, so they need to they need to extend and give the illusion that time is passing. But unlike all the other dungeons we're we're later going to see, this one doesn't actually advance the plot at all. Like it's it's just here to be an annoying pit stop because of course you know it's an MMO and it's an RPG game like we can't possibly ever have a journey you know that goes completely smoothly and nothing whatsoever goes wrong no we can't have those things
And of course we get used to this treasure. <laughs> but my current gear is already better, so don't need any of that. So yeah, what's with this beacon or tower thing in the background? Creepy and ominous. So yeah, it seems we were not the first to be uh, stranded, stuck, dragged into this place, whatever term you want to use. I do find it a bit funny though that there's just birds hanging out here. Like, I, I guess they're here to, to feed off the inevitable corpses that they uh, they plan to eventually see once they, you know, suck the life out of us and whatnot. But uh, th th like, they just feel like so out of place with all these like just just sea and ghostly apparitions and everything like that. But I find it I find it pretty funny and kind of some truth that at the same time. You need, you need you need somebody to pick the something to pick the bones clean, eh? The, the, the who's who is who is firing all this crap at us in the back in the background? That the reason we're up here is to avoid it. Uh, that I don't know. Clearly, that they're they're not happy that we're not quite dead yet. How convenient! Well, it seems, uh, the Garleans, uh, didn't escape this place without incident either. It's good to know these apparitions don't discriminate. But sadly, these guys aren't dressed in pirate gear. Like, that, that would be utterly hilarious. Because, I mean, it's obvious they were, they were former... Uh, sailors, so... I mean, they wouldn't necessarily have to be pirates, but come on. Come on. Slap a bandana on one of the patch on one of these guys, will ya? How does not one of these guys have a peg leg? Okay, sir, but what were you a governor of? Like, okay, but... See, these DPS are interested in testing my healing abilities over here. Mechanics, not just for cars. Oh, look, they even, they even took the puppies. Like... You dirty sirens. Why did you have to take the puppers? I wonder what this building was formerly of. 
So everything else has been broken ship, so apparently this must have been a settlement at one time. I mean, now that we're up closer, we can clearly see that this is a lighthouse in the background. It's hard to notice from far away with all... Super creepy glowy stuff going on there. Okay, creepy headless lady, you're not really that much creepier than anything else I've experienced in the air and so far, but what you got for me? Are you surprised we made it this far? So are you by chance a Rizalka of some kind? Perhaps? Maybe? I don't know. I'm not I'm not too familiar with uh all too many depths and varieties to, to forms of, of sirens and other like creatures who lure men to their deaths via the water. So you'll, you'll have to pardon me. Knowledge is rather limited in that matter, but that is a-okay. Like, like I said before, this, this dungeon, to me, it's not a bad dungeon by any means, but it just very much feels like an afterthought where when they the when they were designing you know the the this is the core story they need to fit another dungeon somewhere and they're like well let's let's have a ship graveyard or something but we already did that well do another one you know Now, lady, if you could stop making me crazy and walking into walls, um, that would be very nice of you. Cle clearly, your great plan to kill us and suck our souls dry is to uh, force us into concussions and bodily injuries by walking into walls. Kind of a lame plan, but... And on second thought, I don't know if that many people have actually tried to kill us that way, so kudos for creativity, I guess? Maybe? I don't know. So, you got any other tricks up your sleeve? Well, assuming those are sleeves. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're made of, so... Nope, you're just gonna make me walk backwards in the walls? Okay. Alright. I see your game. Good night!
Oh, seem to be using the lighthouse as an amplifier of some kind, maybe? Oh, the Gita minion dropped! I didn't get it, but... No adorable turtle for me today. That's quite alright, though. I'll get it some other time. Thank the Twelve! Oh, hi guys. Everything's fine now. See, the sun is out and everything. We can see where we're going. Everything here would appear to be in order. Good. Repairs should be completed by the time we return to the Misery. Whereupon we shall resume our journey without further delay. I swear, if I never hear another ghost story, it will be too soon. Well, it seems we made it there without further incident. That's good. I remember the sea. The smell of the salt and the crash of the waves as we drew closer to Kugane. The only port open to outsiders in Hingashi, across the Ruby Sea from Othard, from Doma. All the colors of the rainbow, all the peoples of the world, all in one place. I wish you could have seen it. Okay, I know the tower is kind of small, but can we can we stop it with this dramatic slow walk? So yeah, now through Lisa's narration, we can see, we can hear that she clearly is speaking, writing, expositing to to someone, but we don't know who this intended recipient is quite yet. So, right before we end this episode, and we talk to everyone about this, I, I really wish there was another cutscene after uh, the dungeon happened ab 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 while we were aboard the ship, because we know that Alphano doesn't like ghost stories, and it would have been really funny if we just had a scene aboard the ship about, you know, like, glad that's over with, you know, and like, we, we just like joke and talk about the whole surrealness of of the situation because it is kind of the big lipped alligator moment of of the entire expansion. It just comes it's not a bad dungeon by any means, but it just comes right out of nowhere and nobody's ever going to speak of this again. It has no bearing on the plot whatsoever whatsoever. But it wouldn't have been really funny if after the fact either someone just was standing behind Alphano or something or accidentally like just bumped up against him and just had him like shriek, you know, like a girl. And, like, like you wouldn't even have to show it. Just, like, have it, like, off-scene. And then just everyone laughs at his expense. And he's like, you know, he'll, he'll try to brush it off. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we know you're scared. Like, we still love you anyway. But, and, and just have everyone have a good laugh. And, you know, kind of just, just ease the tension of, of the rest of this this journey. And whatnot. But it doesn't happen. I think I really think the, the story would have benefited from or out of it. Rather than just forget this whole thing ever happened too soon, you know? No, no, that's that's the concept. Having been on a cruise ship uh, at one point in my life, yeah, that you kind of get used to the, the sway of the boat, so when you get on land, it takes like another day or two 
to actually become well grounded again. So yeah, I think it's I think it's kind of interesting that that that's commented on. But what you don't hear commented on at all is nobody gets seasick. Like you don't even have a joke about that. Like first you have nobody showing signs of any sort of altitude sickness about some all. I I can kind of forgive the game for that because some people get it, some people don't. But not one single joke about somebody being seasick or wanting to throw up over the edge of overboard. Not even any of the of 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 the crew even joking about one of us doing that. Like I feel like this journey across the sea was just so hollow, you know? Like we weren't going to get here any other way, but they, they really could have done a little bit more with it. Yeah, it wasn't your fault. It's not like you were, like, leading us into a trap or whatever, or trying to troll the crap out of us for, you know, daring to elicit your services for this quite lengthy journey. Oh, look, and we even get an achievement for that. Okay, nobody said anything now? Yeah, poor Lisa over there is, like, suffering some culture shock over here. Not that I entirely would blame her for doing so. So, that's gonna be it for this episode. Uh, next time, we will... Find out what we need to actually do here, because we still need to find our way to Doma. Because th th this is this is where our journey ends, so... Not quite out of the woods yet, but I'm sure we will find a way soon enough. Thank you very much for watching, friends, and I shall see you next time.